morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome everyone to a webinar of Kalipados Nafta Interim Financial Results for the first three months of 2018. Uh, my name is Justina Suknis, and I'm an account manager here at NASDAQ Vilnius. And today I'm pleased to introduce today's host, uh, the CEO of Kalipados Nafta, Mr. Mindaugas Yusis. Uh, before we proceed with the presentation, I will short, shortly introduce you uh, with the agenda. Uh, first of all, Mr. Yusus is going to comment on Klepidos NAFTA performance so far in 2018. Uh, then we will be answering questions after the presentation. Uh, so please feel free to send your questions along uh, using the questions box on your web webinar control panel. All questions will be answered after the presentation. So once again, uh, welcome for those just joining. And uh, Mr. Yusus, now I would like to give the floor to you. Good morning. Today I would like to present the first quarter results of Claypodas Nafta. I'd like to start with uh, short information about the company key highlights, then focus on financial results. So Klepodas Nafta is a LNG and oil terminal operator. I would like to excuse myself uh, for my voice. I left half of that yesterday in Kaunasjalgiris Arena. So first of all, congratulations to all Kaunasjalgiris fans. And uh, back to presentation. Uh, at the moment, Klepodos Nafta is operating uh, four terminals in Lithuania. Two of them are oil terminals. One is uh, for storage purpose in Subachus. The other one, uh, which is the main uh, revenue generator in Klepeda. And two LNG terminals. One is large scale and the other one is a small scale terminal, which has started operations uh, late uh, last year. So from the highlights, um, in Q1 there was uh, quite a lot of happenings, but I would like to highlight uh, uh, three things. First of all, regards the corporate governance. Uh, today, um, in the morning, uh, we expect a shareholders meeting to approve uh, new council members. Important message is that uh, two out of uh, three uh, new members would be independent and I'm sure this would uh, further strengthen the governance of the company and as well uh, independence uh, from political influence. Uh, the second uh, point that I would like to highlight uh, is uh, sign MOU with the Freeport. That is an important uh, partner for our global LNG operations. And in the previous slide, uh, I had presented that Klipdos Nafta is operating uh, four terminals and all of them are based in Lithuania. The next step for the company is to develop uh, LNG terminals all over the world. And we had made uh, significant progress over the last uh, a year and a half and the partnership with the Freeport Will open up uh, new opportunities for the company and the access to uh, new developments uh, that are happening mainly in uh, South America. The third uh, thing that I would like to highlight uh, is uh, regards the Poiri report. The company had uh, ordered uh, analysis uh, which would investigate uh, the market uh, developments, Lithuanian gas market developments, and the need for large-scale LNG terminal in Lithuania. The findings uh, are that uh, the terminal is expected to create further economic uh, value for the country and for the whole region as well after 2024. I would like to remind that uh, the current agreement with HOC uh, is valid until uh, 2024 and now we are starting uh, considering uh, the options, alternatives, how to assure 
the access to global LNG market uh, for Lithuania as well after 2024. Uh, the message is uh, good not only for the country but as well <coughs> for the company shareholders since uh, the terminal is creating uh, as well substantial part of the profit uh, uh, for the company and its shareholders. As well, in terms of uh, dividends, there was uh, uh, a slight deviation from, from our traditional expectation to pay out uh, around 50-70% of uh, the profit in form of dividends. Uh, the board has taken a decision to pay out 100% of net profit earned in 2017. Uh, the reasons are that uh, our company's financials are doing well. Uh, all investments are going according to the plan and uh, the result was exceeding our expectations. So, uh, in terms of dividends, uh, that means uh, uh, four and a half approximately per cents per share will be paid out if such decision will be approved uh, in half an hour in our shareholders meeting today. Uh, a little bit more details on uh, LNG terminal perspectives. Uh, I had mentioned that the study indicates uh, the terminal is creating the value and uh, what are the options to proceed. Uh, <coughs> there are three main options under consideration and one is still under development. Among those three, the uh, acquisition of uh, FSRU terminal after 2024, a renegotiation of lease agreement, uh, extending that for additional 10 years or additional 20 years period. And it's not mentioned, but together with Hyok, we are also considering one more option, uh, but uh, that needs uh, further analysis. Uh, why, where from the main uh, benefit comes uh, to the terminal, gives a uh, main impact on the price level for our region and that's uh, where the most of the value comes for the society or residents or especially those uh, companies and businesses which are using gas in their production and uh, <coughs> we are expecting to come up with a selected option by mid of this year the company will present uh, findings to the government of Lithuania in July and then we will start uh, working on the implementation plan. Now probably the most important most interesting part uh, financial results of the company if uh, to look at uh, our revenues they are at a pretty comparable level as it was in Q1 2017, but uh, EBITDA and net profit are significantly better. And the reasons uh, I will explain uh, investigating in more details uh, further slides. But just to comment, uh, so net profit uh, was 6.8 uh, million euros. That is uh, pretty close to our best ever quarter which we had in Q1 2017 uh, sorry 2016 and if to look at uh, <coughs> more detailed development of uh, financial results uh, we see a positive trend and uh, quite uh, extraordinary in terms of uh, result uh, Q1 the main reason was that uh, when comparing uh, results we had uh, much better uh, much better oil transshipment volumes while uh, revenues of large scale LNG terminal decreased approximately by 2 million euros so that was compensated by increase in uh, oil transshipment revenues in total we had uh, earned 
10.4 million euros of transshipment volumes uh, revenues. The reason is uh, that uh, we received uh, quite a lot of uh, products from uh, Belarusian refineries, especially if to compare uh, with versus 2017, the same period when uh, there was conflict between Russia and Belarus and refineries did not receive sufficient uh, uh, crude oil. That was not the case in 2018. It also gives us uh, additional positive uh, impact. And January was uh, really impressive in terms of volumes, uh, while March was already uh, something in our expected uh, volume range. And uh, the main uh, <coughs> EBITDA generator this year remains oil terminal. After that uh, follows uh, LNG large scale. Subachus oil storage terminal also improved uh, their results, uh, although the impact of uh, their activities are not that significant. So you can see that transshipments uh, of oil products increased by 32% in Claypeda, and mostly that was driven by transit, as I explained. Uh, as well, I would like to highlight that uh, our investment into truck uh, uh, loading station pays back um, better than we expected. We see the increase of 47% uh, in terms of volume and uh, truck filling uh, reconstruction also was, uh, this object was improved in the end of 2017 and that gives us additional imp impulse into the growth. In total, transshipment uh, volumes were 2 million uh, tons. Subachus uh, storage volumes increased by 8.6% uh, and that was uh, driven by additional um, need for oil product storage that we successfully competed against uh, other terminals and our volumes increased as well. Uh, that gave a positive impact on net profits. Situation with the uh, LNG terminal is uh, a little bit different. Pre-gas uh, volumes decreased during uh, 2017 Q1 by 33%. The reasons are different, but mainly uh, that's a seasonal impact. And during uh, Q1 uh, this year, globally, prices of LNG increased uh, significantly, mainly driven by China's demand. And our traders, they had chosen uh, other sources, as well as uh, uh, last year, there was some uh, LNG stored in uh, Latvian underground uh, storage. And during the winter, the gas was uh, taken from the storage as well. Nevertheless, uh, that had uh, no impact on uh, Clipless NAFTA financial results since uh, this activity is regulated and we are granted uh, uh, revenues from operating LNG terminal. If to look at the balance sheet, uh, so our assets and as well equity and liabilities increased by 1.7%. Uh, no significant difference to be highlighted uh, in the structure, neither in terms of assets or liabilities. If to look at uh, the leverage level, it remains uh, still very low. We have uh, loans of uh, 76 uh, million euros and uh, 200 uh, million euros of uh, equity. That gives us a uh, return on equity in Q1 of 9.4%, uh, returns on assets uh, 6.9, uh, so that's really 
I would uh, say good result it uh, really exceeded our initial plans for this year and for this uh, quarter but uh, station we expect uh, probably will not uh, be as good uh, looking uh, further for coming quarters uh, just as well to to manage uh, the expectations accordingly uh, since the market competition is uh, pretty tough uh, we face uh, not only Latvian or Estonian ports as competitors as well we see Ukrainian ports uh, becoming more and more active trying to attract uh, Belarusian refinery products uh, but we are as well preparing for this competition and doing further investments if to look at the investments uh, the company uh, last year invested uh, close to 33 million euros and uh, if to look at the uh, investment structure from 2012 investments dominated into LNG infrastructure firstly large-scale terminal later 2016 and 17 it was uh, LNG small-scale terminal but starting from 2016 we are as well investing into oil terminal infrastructure to make uh, our abilities to uh, to accept uh, more different various types of products and 2018 uh, we are expecting most of the investments to be done into oil terminal Q1 uh, investments uh, in terms of amount size to 3 million euros but uh, the real investments or jobs done are a little bit bigger and payments comes with a slight delay in Q1 we had uh, completed uh, and officially got commissioned uh, light fuel oil tanks park of seven tanks we are uh, almost commi commissioned uh, fuel oil containment uh, water tanks as well small-scale LNG terminal got uh, all final documentation and permits to be fully in operations <clears throat> on the right side of the slide you can see new developments and investments uh, that we had started so six tanks uh, by 20,000 cubic meters and uh, for foundation installation work started and are ongoing and additional uh, part of smaller tanks uh, which will enable us as well to operate with uh, petrochemical and uh, various additional types of uh, oil products are as well under construction I already mentioned that LNG reloading station it uh, had uh, been fully completed uh, in Q1 first commissioning cargo was accepted uh, in the end of uh, October now we are uh, we shifted towards regular operations uh, in terms of importance of this uh, project uh, I would like to mention that Truskininke is a small city in the south of Lithuania but uh, they took during the winter LNG from our terminal instead of uh, buying gas from the pipeline which uh, which made an economic positive impact for for their city in terms of uh, truck loading uh, we already loaded more than 100 trucks in Klaipeda and uh, these operations are successfully developing further on still to mention that uh, main of uh, expectations are related still with marine market marine market developments uh, takes a little bit uh, longer nevertheless uh, we are uh, ready to accept uh, the increase in market demand thank you that was the key highlights from our first quarter okay thank you very much uh, mr Yusus, for the presentation uh, we can now take uh, some questions. Uh, I would like to remind you that you can send your questions in the section on the right side of your screen. Uh, 
Uh, we have received uh, one question and it sounds, uh, what impact on the financial performance of the company would have a decision for acquisition of FSRU terminal? Is company uh, ready for it? Uh, that's a good question, thank you. Uh, we are still investigating different alternatives. If we are talking about uh, extension of lease, this means uh, good news for the company financials in terms of uh, the fact that operations will continue for a longer period, but uh, the net profit, since it is regulated, uh, could remain at a very comparable level as we have today. The other option, uh, if we would consider acquisition of FSRU, the company is, is ready and uh, started some uh, discussions with commercial banks. Uh, this decision would have a, a much bigger impact on companies' uh, balance sheet, first of all. We would acquire uh, an asset uh, which, which is uh, uh, of, of, of the value are comparable to the current equity of the company. We feel that uh, we are capable, definitely capable to implement this option. The consequence uh, for financials would be uh, definitely higher profit since uh, the profit comes uh, regulated but based on uh, the amount of investments done. So depending on the leverage uh, rate that we will receive from the banks, uh, we might see bigger or, or a little bit smaller, but definitely increasing if there's not the profit. In case this option would be, uh, would be chosen, I would like really to highlight that we are at the moment still investigating and comparing all those different options from economic, from risk perspective, as well from technical, uh, from technical perspective. Okay, thank you. Uh, we know, Mr. Yusuf, that you have your shareholders meeting in eight minutes, so we will just take uh, one more question that came in. Uh, so the question sounds, uh, when, when the investment projects will be finalized, what impact would they have for the operations of the company and its competitiveness? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, thank you. The answer, in short, would be following that. Uh, at the moment, uh, we managed to increase the number of products uh, quite significantly. If uh, 15 years ago, the terminal was mainly operating with two different products, at the moment, in our tanks, uh, we have, I think, 18 different uh, products already. But after the investments we do, we will be capable to uh, transship as well petrochemical products. This is as well very important uh, because our customers will be capable to do blending in our terminal. And in this uh, sense, we will we believe that we will keep our competitive advantages further on. Uh, we might be able to attract more customers, if not uh, more volumes, then at least improve our margins. And uh, in addition, we would become much more interesting terminal for Contango business, meaning that customers who could bring the product uh, through the sea, do the blending, keep it for storage and later take it uh, again back to the sea, uh, which we are not uh, so active at the moment and we are not having so many services available today. Um, the investment program of, of the second phase is expected to end uh, by the end of 2020. That has uh, three main parts. It's uh, uh, storage tanks, it's additional railway trust, and as well uh, we are uh, working uh, closely with the port with up upgrading our jetties and uh, according to the phase two 
as a result, Lepidosnaft uh, should have uh, three jetties. At the moment, we are operating uh, two jetties. Plus, the draft will be deeper. And again, this uh, this is, to my opinion, very critical uh, for keeping our competitiveness. I guess I managed to answer this question in short. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else, Mendogas, that you would like to to cover before 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 we end this session? I would like just to thank you for our shareholders and investors who expressed trust towards the company and just like to assure that the management is fully dedicated to deliver best in class results. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So on behalf of, of Klaipados Nafta, we also thank everyone for participating. The recording, as usual, of the presentation will be will be available in the NASDAQ Baltic uh, YouTube channel webinar playlist. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yusus, uh, for your time. Uh, thanks, everybody, and have a nice day.